Hello and welcome to this video. <laughs> My name is Allie from AmarySpeaks.com and today I'm going to be taking a diversion from my conscious, um, Comprehending Consciousness series, excuse me, to just take a quick deep dive around shadow work. So if you didn't see my latest episode um, 14, it is geared towards shadow work. I'll link it below. So anybody who is interested in new, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And please definitely um, take a watch at episode 14 because I really go over the generalities and sort of what the word means, the misconceptions around it, like how the world views it, how... It, we view it as individuals, a space of working, um, very introductionary. So if you're brand new, um, definitely take a look at that because I'm not going to, I'm going to try my hardest <laughs> not to go into the um, importance of doing the work, right? For this video specifically, as titled, you know, I really want to highlight on the foundation of shadow work and how we get our light right in order to do shadow work, right? Um, so I'm gonna kind of not really talk about the important aspects, why shadow work is important and what it is and all of that. Um, and I'll, I'll ramble on for an hour, honestly, if I get caught up in that. So um, as a point of focus for myself and for everybody who's watching and respect our precious time, right? I'm going to just focus on the foundations here of shadow work. Now, many people have um, preconceived ideas of what shadow work is, what light work is, um, what our whole purpose here is, right? And so with this video, and my channel in general, as I said numerous times, you know, this is my personal perspective. This is my opinion. This is information that I have let um, percolate or coagulate, you know, and, and it's just spoken from my heart and its version of my truth that I, um, that only I am capable of sharing, right? And with that, I say that from a space of respect and sovereignty because each one of us has this own space to speak from and to, to listen from as well. So I really hope that um, people can get into the space of listening, honestly, and not listening to critique, not listening to put your, your opinion in, your dogma, your excuses and in, in, in your restrictions on, on ideas. You know, this, this space is a space of opening awareness, of um, an offering, a buffet table, right? Of all of these different things. And no one's forcing you to put things on your plate or to eat anything. Um, it's all of your own volition. And it's up to you to see the, the offerings for what they are. So with that said, um, if shadow work is something that triggers you or something that you don't like the tone or the choice of words for that, um, that's a real trigger, right? That's a rough spot that for you, you should be looking with some introspection to understanding why that rough spot's there for you and trying to smooth it out. Right? Um, can't do that in videos um, at an individual level because it's so unique, right? That, and that's the beauty, it's the double-edged sword, it's the beauty and the struggle, right? Because these, the workings are general templates, but you take it and make it unique, you know? That's what diversity is. Um, and that's half of the beauty of this whole world, the whole creation, right? Is putting your unique spin on it. So if 
you're feeling like scared or triggered by shadow work, by the word shadow, you should probably take that as a big red flag that you have a lot of discernment, a lot of exploration to go through around those terms, to really dig at them and define them for yourself, to figure out why you have a fear of words. Um, so for, for all of us, at the very beginning of this video, what I'd, what I'd love to envision and hope for everyone here is that we could kind of just take our whole preconceived idea of shadow work and just put it away for right now, you know? Um, and let's talk about building a foundation and, and empowering our light. Because at the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day, sun rises and it sets. It all starts with light. It all embodies light. Light work. Now, generality of light work is service to others. And we think of it as exterior, helping others out there in the world, right? But there's this other dual side of the coin for light work, introspective light work for uh, growing our own light body, right? So, before we can step into a place where we can do shadow work as an individual on our own, the first place that we start at is light work because it feels good. <laughs> And it's, it's not to be a band-aid to put over and to never get to shadow work later. That's not the point. It's to charge our energetic self, our energetic body, to gain more light so that when we go to focus our light into shadowed areas, we're already comfortable with our light. We're already comfortable with ourselves so that we can look honestly to serve shadow. When you have a lot of distortions, when you are creating shadows out of your own light, you are never going to get to a place of, of um, positive shadow work, of uh, growth. You're going to be adding more shadows into your shadows. You're just casting down awkward lighting, creating more shadows in the chaos of that. And so I, say, I always say initially, if shadow work sparks your curiosity, if you have a lot of trauma, if you have a lot of hard feelings, um, if you're struggling with self-love, if you're struggling with faith, if you're struggling with confidence, um, then you need to do light work first. You have to hone and tone and recognize your light before you can even worry about shadow work. Because it's only your light, only your truth, that can ever shine positivity and clarity down into your shadow. No one else's light does the work in shadow work. Yes, other's light lights up the space for you so that the angles aren't as confusing, so that the shadow work down there can be started more honestly when you have exterior light, somebody's help, guidance, um, a mentor or a, a spiritual figure who can hold their light along with yours and empower it while, while you're doing sorting through the most obvious of the shadows, right? Because um, if, if we don't, then it's like you're just going to create more of these loops inside of yourself, more of these shadows, more of these liar loops to where maybe you're thinking you're going somewhere, you're thinking that you're making progress, but in fact you have blinders on and you're in a loop, a liar's loop, right? Just ignoring, um, ignoring the signs that nothing's changing. 
if instead we harness our light first, we get in touch with what that feels like, then that's your compass. That's your true north. That is the, the guidance while you're driving um, that tells you the exit coming up is my exit. It's the exit I need to take. Right? Um, because otherwise, we can see false signs and go with them. And really, it's not actually an exit to higher growth. It's an exit to an on-ramp to get you back onto that same loop and then to start all over again. Um, it can be really frustrating when you go into shadow work before you're ready or without guidance and you're just getting off on an exit onto an on-ramp back onto the loop and around and around and oh my gosh I've seen this before why am I here again all the same thing it never changes uh, I keep seeing signs of this exits are coming up and, and I take the I follow the signs and I take the exit it says to and yet I'm on a ramp and back around but it's because exterior information, exterior motives, are you're allowing them to tell you and guide you to what exit is right for you. The intentional alignment, the energetic in intention here needs to shift. Your truth, your light will tell you, will feel uprising out, out, outside, <laughs> from inside out that the exit's right for you to take. It's never an exterior input of confirmation that will tell you that you're the exit for your spiritual growth. If you're having external infringements telling you to go in a certain way, you should know right away that it's exterior from you. But that takes light work in itself, and so it's a catch-22, because if you're not doing any light work and you think you're doing shadow work and you're spinning around in these liar loops, shoving band-aids of false light on things every time you go over the overpass and onto the new loop, you know, you get a slap of a band-aid um, of positivity, a little, a little there you go, from the system, from, from the exterior, and, and then you're right back on the loop until you realize, oh, I've seen this tree, I've seen this house, oh, I know where I am, why am I here again? So frustrating. And I speak from experience. And you know what? It's like we all do these things on, a, on way different levels and of different perspectives in different categories and topics across of our whole lives, right? Um, people can be super awake and, and super connected to their true north, their inner voice, God or source, say, um, in their own personal lives with relationships and friends, and, and they can be a very loving, good person in that way, but they can still have shadowed aspects, say that they're hiding from, like, in the academia world or, or in the government world, and, they, and, and they're spinning on these loops inside of there, thinking that exterior models of morals imposed by these outer structures like government or monarchies or society are the truth are your truth um, when in fact what we, we realize at the end of the day is that if they do align with, if exterior sources align with our truth that's beautiful because they're a reflection of us but the initial spark is it has to be within you you have to own that power that energy the resonance the reflection you own it first and then you're able to see it reflected out what's happening is the reverse they're telling us what to own and you're feeling oh I have to own this oh I am this I must be this since they're telling me the shadows the shadow work um, it, it can engulf you it's this is what I said at the very start you know this is a double-edged very dangerous tightrope to walk on, shadow work. And it's being displayed out there to the mainstream like everybody's got to do it right now. Go get on your tightrope and just take a walk. It's for everybody. Like, no, it's not. And there's no net <laughs> in real shadow work either. So 
it's not just everybody get on a tightrope and start walking. However, like I'll say, these outward structures, the society, the mainstream, the negative orientation who are implanting that idea that it is for everybody and everybody just get right at it, um, it's a cool new thing, it's the new fad, you know, um, that's an agenda all of its own because they're, they're betting on your failure. You know, they know the ads are stacked against 99% of people out there who are going to get on that wire. They're never making it to the other side. They're falling off into their, you know, pit that the agenda has placed under there because they know that um, the falsity of it, right? They know the intricate working that it takes, the faith it takes to walk across the tightrope. And um, they're banking on so many of us uh, not leading through example, right? They're just banking on so many of us just walking across it and, and, and the whole crowd like, oh, it looks so easy. Yeah? And, and, but we never tell them about the 20 years of practice we did beforehand, before we made that walk. Nobody's been with us for that 20 years of practice that we did before we stepped on the rope. They just see, oh, look how well it worked for them. It doesn't work for me, it's fake. They're fake, they're lying. In the system, the infringement society, whoever you want to look at it as, the dogmas, they love that, you know? They don't want anybody saying I did 20 years of conditioning practice to get me brave and courageous enough and strong enough to walk across that tightrope and so here in this video is what I want to talk about about the 20 years of conditioning practice about the mental preparation that goes into shadow work we really, I, I, I just can't think of any clearer time or message in, that it's the time to empower light here and to build our light muscles, <laughs> right? To, to bring more light into our energy bodies. And I know, and I'm well aware, that this can sound totally woo-woo out there. And with that, I can say, you know, this, this is not for beginners, really. You know, beginners really need to work with an established light worker on an individual level to hone and tone their muscles. Just like you would work with a personal trainer if you think that you're going to be, you know, deadlifting 500 pounds or whatever. You, or if you're obese and want to get into, into shape, right? You go get a health worker, you get a life coach, you get a personal trainer. All of these people to empower and motivate you, to show you the smaller steps, right? Um, and, light, and light work and shadow work are, are exactly the same in that sense, you know? Um, you, can, you can certainly just go for it on your own. You can certainly go to the gym by yourself. And you know what, a percentage of people change their lives all by themselves. They don't have to have somebody right next to them. They don't have to have a leader or a teacher. And that's beautiful, that's great. If you're one of those people, welcome, cool. Um, if you're not, there's, there's no shame in that either. It honestly is just the honest assessment of yourself to see where you're at energetically, emotionally, and um, and physically, and, and accepting the level that you're at. That's, that is the immediate foundation of shadow work. Once you get to that space and you say, okay, I do have a lot of uncomfortable things I don't like about myself. I do have trauma. I did have X, Y, and Z, you know, terrible things happen to me in my life. Um, 
and and I I want to feel better. I want I want to get out of this victim state. I don't want to feel um, belittled anymore or feel less than. You know, we get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And it's only when you get to that place, just like a healing journey with a physical illness, you know, it's only when you get to the space of actually wanting to heal that you ever really do the work. And that, that space is so individual and private. It's, it's not showcased. You can't look at another and really know for sure their intention, right? So knowing your intention is really um, the foundation, right? If you can get to this foundational space where you are intending to heal, where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, and where you're ready to get out of your rock bottom, right? This is where self-love, unconditional love, forgiveness, appreciation, and gratitude come into play. Joy, humor, these little trinkets of positivity um, that so many of us who have been hurt, traumatized, um, mind controlled, all of these cages, boxes that we put ourselves in, right? Um, they become sort of like a comfort level, this, this caged homeostasis of like uncomfortable pain. And we just think, oh, well, I'm, I'm surviving right here at this, so it's not like I can't put anything else on me or worry about like freeing myself up because like this is as little as I can take right now. You know? That space is a difficult place to be at, to help yourself out of. If you're in that kind of space where you really can't... Um, loosen your shoulders and give yourself a pat on the back for anything. You can't take a deep sigh and just see the good things that you have done before or the potential of good that you might have later. Then you really need to pull in extra help. You really have to do some work with others. Um, and. It, and that can be in a variety of ways, you know. That can be traditional counseling or therapy if that suits you well. It can be spiritual mentorship or shamans or um, even just speaking with somebody who you know in your life, who you directly resonate with, who you feel inspires you, or somebody who you feel has wisdom um, or gives good advice. You know, you can go and talk to them because... You will feel it. You will feel the empowering light, lightness that you get from that other when you have a conversation with them. When they help you on an individual level, you'll feel your unconditional love well that is in here, you know, start bubbling up, start overflowing. It remembers that it's a well right? That deep down inside there, there's a connection to this great underground aquifer, replenished, renewing, always there, unconditional love. And then, you know, it bubbles up, it comes out, it starts to flow. And when you can get in that place of flowing, then you can do some shadow work. Then you have some love and light to cast on shadow, right? But if you can't even get into that space, if that space is hurtful to you, then know that you need some additional help and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's, there is a beauty in that actually, right? There is such strength in raising your hand for assistance. Sometimes in our lives, there's nothing harder, right? 
than being that one that doesn't get it in class. Being that one that feels left out, right? And saying, F it, I don't care. I'm gonna ask anyway. There's bravery in that. And I really feel like it's underplayed in this world. And, and of course, because they really want us as victims. They really don't want us to be empowering each other and empowering ourselves. You know, it's, it's not conducive to the 3D matrix. Any of the systems that they have in place out there don't work when an individual recognizes its sovereignty, its worth. You know, because once you realize your sovereign worth and how priceless and amazing it is, you will never, ever give it up. You will never bow down and surrender it to any other being. You won't. You will not. Because when you connect to it, it's innate. It's organic. It is so deep that um, you can't give it away even if you wanted to. And so when this is, you know, and this is a whole other thing that I won't even get into right now, but it's the inversions of shadow, the manipulation and deceit required to keep shadows in, hidden, right? They have a lot of agendas. They have a lot of structuring in, in the shadows that keep all of the uh, disfigurements and the contortions in a certain way. So they can be perceived as a certain way in the darkness. Because when you go in there with a the light and you shine your light, it doesn't just point and cast it in one way like the shadow wants you to, right? The shadow wants to be seen in a specific way. So it hides itself in the rays in a way that the shadow is portrayed in a way it wants to be seen. When you go down in with your light shining bright and it's um, multi-dimensional, it is uh, 360 encompassing all angles of light, there's nowhere for a shadow to hide. It, it can't contort itself in its own, um, in a way that it can manipulate the way it's being seen because all angles of light are being cast upon it, right? Um, <clears throat> it's similar to um, a movie setting, I'll say. You know, without saying exactly what I'm talking about here, but if we are making a movie, and we are attempting to make a movie, say, where the sun comes in from a certain angle, only um, it's rays cast in a certain way supposedly that when you put something in front of it the shadows over here should look in a certain way right because like physics mathematics tells us about the ways that light works and and, and a shadow that's cast in front of it has, has a shadow here not there you know um, when we have multiple angles of lighting the shadows don't just cast in a single way, right? We see awkward shadows. We see shadows cast off in a whole other way on that direction or on this direction back here. And we're saying to ourselves, wait a minute. Light source is coming from one angle only. How are we seeing shadows cast over that way? It's impossible. Energy alchemy works in the same way, right? We are, we are the stuff of the universe. We are all of the same, made up of the sameness, of the sun, the moon, ether, the stars, our earth, right? Um, our light and our shadows obey those same laws, they, the same workings, okay? And so when, when we don't fully embody, accept and love our light as it is, right? Instead of being the all-encompassing light that can work in shadow work to show shadow for what it truly is, we end up with 
a light with blinders on it or like a beam, you know, where we're like, like a headla headlamp like this one where you can just cast it in a certain way, you know. Um, and that really encourages and allows the shadow to misdirect the light in a way and, and keep control and keep hidden. Um, and, that, and, and that's why, again, when I started off at the beginning talking about like these loops and how we can get on this path of like thinking we've done the shadow work with light work and put a band-aid on it and then we end up in the same problem and you notice like the same exact things are happening in your world, right? This is, this is a big reason why, because we are casting, um, subjective light, I guess, you know, false light. And this is why it's so important that we bring in light work and we balance it with the shadow work and we ensure that we have our light right before we go doing shadow work because if your light's a mess and you go to do shadow work you're not seeing your shadows accurately first and foremost which I mean is the most important thing of shadow work and secondly you're creating more distortions while you're trying to do the work so really it's like when you go to clean your house and you end up just you know making a bigger mess because you decided to reorganize everything in the house at the same time. And so you go to every cabinet, every closet, every drawer, and you just pull everything out and put it in the middle of the rooms everywhere, right? That's just creating more chaos than you had before. It's not actually doing any or doing anything, doing and doing any organization. And the thing with when we get into shadow work, right, it, it's exhausting, it's tiring, it depletes our energy and our light. Um, especially if you can't, if you're not doing, you know, active light work, if you're not cleansing and clearing, if you're not taking care of your energetic body, if you're not releasing that which no longer serves you, your spiritual body, you know, if you're not cleansing your physical body, if you're eating and drinking trash all the time, you know, um, if you're breathing in trash that should be expelled out and released, you know, um, basically you're just taking everything out of all your cabinets, all your drawers, and leaving it in the middle of the room. I mean, like, why is it such a mess in here? Then you're too tired you took the whole day, say, to do that, and you're too tired to even put everything back where it came from, let alone organize it all the way you wanted to rearrange the whole place, right? And then you say, oh, shadow, do shadow work doesn't work. <laughs> or you say, oh, I'm not strong enough. Oh, my light. Oh, this. Oh, that. Oh, and you fall down into the middle of your house in a pile of crap, and you cry, and, and you hope that somebody's going to come back and call one of your friends to come clean your house up for you. You know, it's a uncomfortable working to get involved in. So, first and foremost, foundationally speaking, if you are going to jump into shadow work, know what you're getting yourself into. Don't try to do your whole house in one day, right? Start with a low-hanging fruit, the first room, the first things, you know, that you know you can do easily. It's not to say your whole house doesn't need to be organized, you know, or your whole being. You don't, you know, we're not, it's, it's the understanding that it's a working. Take your time, right? Allow the processes to unfold in a comfortable way. Because the, mis the, the misconception and per perceived notions out there are like, hire a cleaning crew and just clean your house up. So, you know, buy one of those pods and just throw everything in there and just put it in a storage unit. Your house is clean now. But energetically speaking, karmatically speaking, right, that storage locker is always there. It's still there and it's a mess in there and you still own all that stuff never going away. Yeah, your your little 
area house might look cleaner to you right at this moment, but you still have all that stored up crap that you're just putting blinders on to, forgetting about. You just pay the monthly bill on the storage unit, right? Why keep that crap? Because society tells you to? Because it's more comfortable? Because it's um, filling holes and gaps in your worth? Perhaps? Right? If instead we never allow ourselves to put things in a storage unit, if instead we have the courage to go through things as they are, look at them as they are, then we tend to keep things for their worth. We tend to appreciate the things that we have. We don't gather a lot of extras because they're unnecessary. They're not bringing more happiness because we're happy to start with. So what we bring in, it's not about increasing or decreasing happiness or love, um, but in the quality of your existence in your now present moment. So if things don't align and make you feel good in the present moment, then don't take them on. Right? But to even know that and to even be able to see and feel truth of what is good and positive and feels good in alignment with you, you need to get in, in line with you first. Right? And so, um, Quickly here at the end, I want to just touch on, first and foremost, if, if you have a lot of trauma, if you have a lot of problems or drama in your life, stress in your life, if you really are um, feeling brave enough to finally put your hand up and, and ask for help, then go for the low-hanging fruit in your own life. Look with acceptance um, as much as you can at those things and say, okay, I, if I couldn't change this, how can I at least feel acceptance around it? How can I at least ensure I have a knowledge base that in the future should I approach or be approached with a similar experience, how will I act differently now, right? Switching your, main, your mind frame from relishing in the past, reliving um, things or, you know, um, ruminating the way things used to be or could have been is nothing but adding more confusion adding more clutter to your dirty house. If you instead just assess and look at the present moment and what is there, you will see quite easily, very, very quickly, you know, how to feel better in the moment, how to pull positive, positive feelings into your moment, you know? Um, It really comes back to the choice, you know? Um, it's, it's such a hard topic because, and I do, I do want to stress, I understand because I've come from a, a super victimized mentality. I have had lots of bad things happen in my life. I, I, I've had lots of traumas. <laughs> You know, and through accepting that um, and my roles in all of it has been the most freeing experience my whole life. I no longer um, look down on or demonize the people who did bad things to me. Because in this growth and in acceptance and in a realization 
of duality and polarity and the good bad pull here that we experience as humanity um, I'm thankful to those terrible experiences now because they give me wisdom they give me greater clarity they tell me with more definition what I don't want in my life they help when those those things, those infringements are creeping in and I, I sense a red flag before I might, well, I might bend down to it. I might say, oh, I have to be a people pleaser. I, I don't want to cause waves. I don't want to be disruptive. Oh, I can't. No, that's okay. Now I see it and I see a red flag. Oh, I see you. I've seen you 20 times before. I, no, thank you. Do not consent. Half the time, when you see this red flag of whatever it is and you just say, I see you and I, I accept you, that turns out to be enough. Enough of a change in the ether, in possibilities and probabilities, in the flow of your life, in, in your conversation with God or spirit or source that says, the lesson was learned. Give her a real exit this time, right? Just like back to the beginning when I was talking about the liar loops and, and getting off on exits that are ramps that bring you around, right? This connection, this communion that you can embody, it will really, the red flag that will pop up, this is a false exit. That's a trick. No, I'm not taking that exit. I'll wait for the one that feels right. I'll wait for truth. And, and it will come and it will be there and it will be divinely perfect for you in your little individual path, you know, it'll be Allie's exit to Ascension, you know, and that exit take, takes you off and brings you up to a higher view, you know, more clarity, more understanding. <laughs> it's not to say that that higher view doesn't have its own shadows, it doesn't have its own false exits up there, it doesn't have its own programs, it does. That in itself, in this plane of you universal existence is never ending. Duality and contrast are never ending. So if you really, like I said before, or it might have been in the shadow work actual episode, but if you're seeking a finish line, if you think that any exit is going to be off into a parking lot where you get to park your car and just, <sighs> I'm over. You're, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up, you know, with false expectations. If you can instead see that it's a spiraling upwards and that yes, maybe you're going to re-approach patterns and problems that seem similar. However, it's the intention of higher wisdom and that infinite intelligence um, step up that you're taking in ascension that now you make different choices this time around. Now, instead of fighting back, you go with the flow. Or this time, instead of just going with that, that flow that feels wrong, you stand up. You know, there's neither, neither way is right or wrong because they're both right and wrong at different times. And it's so unique and individual to the shadow, to the problem, to the trauma that you're choosing to work with at the time, right? That's why having strong light inside of you is foundational for doing shadow work, especially if you're going to do it on your own. You know, like I said at the beginning, if, if you're new to this, find a mentor, someone who you resonate with, who you have a bond of trust with and understanding on a personal level that you can work with individually to um, heighten your light, to strengthen your body, your emotional spirit, to get you heart-centered and appreciated and loved and work with you while you sort through some of your shadows, help you with that work at first so that you can really start to clear out all of the, the excess noise and the excess crap and hear your own silence while you're doing your shadow work so that you can really assess your shadows accurately. And you have this great um, like loving mentor here who can give you other perspectives, guidance on what those shadows are, best ways to work with them, different approaches for them that work uniquely to your obstacles, right? Because we each set up our lives with these specific obstacles that are unique to us, that are hurdles we and challenges we get over. 
you know, for ourselves, for our personal growth. Yeah, we're a collective, we're social beings. And it it's important for us to work with others and to do light work for others and to do shadow work for others, you know, as well. And to, But it's all in the balance. It's all in the give and take. And per presently, the collective exterior is so chaotic. It is so extreme. It's not the place for the work. The place for the work is the internal individual right now. We cleanse and clear and sort through our shadows in our own beings on an individual level. And that will clear the chaos in the exterior out there after, <laughs> right? Because it has to take time. We have to do the work inside and reflect the solutions out for the outer exterior world to catch those reflections of solutions, right? And create the play we're all seeing within those solutions. But everybody who's watching has to do the work and reflect that out there first. Um, and that's, you know, that's what this time is all about. And um, and so I, I will say after also here, I'm pushing to 45 minutes, so if you're in a place where you have a bit of light, where you do feel slightly confident, where you know, you know, I love myself, I'm me, I take it or leave it, this is me, you know, it doesn't, I'll, I'll do a whole nother video about self-love. I'm not going to get into the egotistical um, side of self-love. I'm not, you know, this is, that is not what I'm talking about. Honest self-love, unconditional love, and gratitude from the heart center, right? When you can get into that space, your emerald castle in your heart center, right? Uh, however you choose to view that place and space. This is where we work from when we do our own shadow work with ourselves, right? Um, so briefly, quickly, I'll just say here, if you do have a sense of that, if you've been doing work, if you collect light, if you have done a lot of um, self-love work already, you can be charged and feel great. And when you be charged and feel great, know that that's a great time to go and do some shadow work. And, um, and never approach your shadow work as a critique. You know, don't go, don't see light work as a building up and then shadow work as a breaking down, you know, um, because that's kind of a false example, you know. Um, yeah, we are building up an energetic charge with light work and it does um, it, the action of building, you know. But when we go to do our shadow work, it's not breaking apart of anything. It's it's a casting of our light, a singing of our song, um, a plucking of our harp, our inner tune, right, that we do during light work um, that resonates with the shadow. And that gets the shadow to remember it has its own song too. And before it knows it, it's playing its song. And then as the light worker, we're ready to hear that song. And we say, we love your song. It's beautiful. And that releases, that breaks that shadow up. It, different types of shadows release in different ways too. But I mean, that's the basis of it. It's that we're, as light workers, we're calling down into the shadow to remind itself of oneness, to remind itself of its journey, to remind itself of its own lie that it's casted against itself, right? Not in a way to change right now or because we're right and you're wrong. Um, you know, that that's a misinterpretation. It's a loving space that says, I see you for what you are. I see the pain you're in. Why? There's better things to feel. There's better things to do, you know? This is thank you, thank you for the understanding of what I don't want to consent to anymore, for what I don't want to be involved in, for feelings that I don't want to represent or I don't want to harmonize with, right? So I think I've talked long enough here, almost an hour, about creating this foundation and charging our light. Um, mostly, I guess, I geared towards why it's important um, I think next time I'll do um, a quick secondary video that um, can go over the practices because I really didn't get to touch on that yet. 
Um, and I would like to give a couple of awesome practices that have worked for me and my own personal work um, that I feel could be really beneficial to the collective. So I hope you'll follow me um, next time, tune in, and I will offer up a video on some shadow work practices. So if you've watched this whole video, thank you so much for listening. I hope it provides a little bit of working, a little bit of space to you um, to guide in more you -ness <laughs> into your light work and into your shadow work. In the meantime, if you are interested in learning more, I have a whole tools uh, page on amariespeaks.com called Shadow Work, where I have free tips and references, all types of things. If you'd love to dive in, you can go right over there and find a bunch of stuff. Or, like I said before, you know, type Shadow Work into any of your searches that you use. Or if you're on social medias, you know, look at what people in your, your realm are talking about with Shadow Work because it's everywhere right? Uh, keep in mind, right, of your own inner truth, because that's really the only guider in shadow work. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have, have a beautiful day or evening. I hope you'll tune in next time where I'll go through a couple of practices on shadow work. And catch me in episode 15 of Comprehending Consciousness, where I'll just continue on talking about New Age terms and, and phrases that we hear all over the place. Um, yeah. So, I guess I will close out with uh, just a final, quick word of advice. Um, If you're triggered by shadow work, if you feel agitation or fear when you hear the word shadow, dark, darkness, evil, um, I can't impress any more emphasis on how important unconditional love is and gratitude. If you could step outside of your box and view the world on a spectrum of duality where dark and light are included equally, then you can see the purpose, the absolute necessity of both in both extremes as well, right? And so when we get on either side of the spectrum in an extreme point of view, it's really a bunch of red flags that should say, hey, why, why are you causing imbalance on purpose? What are you screaming out for? Attention, love be seen, to be heard, right? And so it seems kind of um, ridiculous to me when people have extreme views that they're so quick to pass judgment and point fingers at others who have extreme views because they're just as silly as yours. Their box is just as strong and valid as yours because you've created it and placed it here. So maybe the best place for you to start is digging into why it is you feel so extremely oriented towards a certain perspective, dogma, belief, religion, if you feel specifically called to one type of writing or, or one speaker or one mentor or just a single personality or avenue of devotion, I think you should really ask yourself and spend time thinking about it. 
Why? Why is it so right to me? Not building up more reasons for why it's right, um, but honestly assessing how it could be wrong. Honestly assessing why it could be that there are so many of these little extreme dogmas and avenues that collect so many people and followers behind them. For me, that was a big changing point in my, the way I thought. Because um, I'm not going to let anybody else box me in, in my present moment, in my life lived here. I just don't see value in that. Um, I see constriction, and confinement, and an extension disconnection and pain. And to me and my understanding, all of those things, they fall in a resonance and a harmony and a side of the spectrum that I don't want to be a part of. I don't want to embody. Um, and so, yeah, maybe that will open up, you know, I a, a little bit of working into you to where you have some courage to, to assess your beliefs a little bit uh, and to not be scared of changing them or scared of asking what if they're wrong. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you again so much for listening and I hope you'll tune in next time. Have a beautiful day.